Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Uh, this is going to be part four of the uh, introduction to KiCad from an uh, Eagle user's perspective. And this may be the longest video, I guess we'll find out. <clears throat> uh, because the uh, board layout is probably the most unique thing in KiCad when compared to Eagle. Uh, the thing we need to do, well, first of all, uh, what we have here is we ran the uh, netlist, we read the netlist, and that brought us into uh, this pane here, where we have a border, and all of our parts have been kind of dumped directly in the middle. This is kind of contrasting to Eagle, which likes to throw all the parts down at the bottom left-hand corner, and uh, same kind of uh, motion, or I guess the uh, uh, same kind of user interface in the sense of the scroll wheel zooms you in and out and pushing the scroll wheel or middle click allows you to pan around. Uh, before we get started we need to do some bookkeeping which is unfortunate this is I think one of the weaknesses of KiCad and that is we need to go into our design rules and hit design rules. Unfortunately KiCad does not have like a file you can upload for the design rules. The, you have to set them up manually every time. Or you could do like a, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, I can't think of the word, uh, you could do like a template project where uh, you set everything up in the project, including the design rules and everything else, and then you just copy the project and use it on over, over and over again. But where we want to go is the global design rules, because these tell you uh, what the board is and isn't allowed to do. And uh, we're going to make these by uh, Oshpark rules. And if you've never used Oshpark, we'll actually show it at the end here, because you can get a really nice board render out of it. And Oshpark rules are uh, six mil uh, traces. Uh, minimum via diameter is 27, minimum via drill is 13, and you can look all these up in <clears throat> on oshpark.com. And uh, for the microvias, we're not using microvias, so we could zero these out or we can leave them alone. <clears throat> Those are really the only... Uh, design rules you need to set as far as for actually running a DRC. Now something we're going to do here is we're going to add a, a custom trace width into here. And whereas with Eagle you could select your trace widths from a little menu right as you're routing, uh, uh, PCB new, the, the KiCad editor, you have to pre-plan them ahead of time. So the uh, KiCad, as I mentioned this before, is a lot more deliberate. It, you know, it's more systematic. It, it wants you to do things in such a way that you don't uh, screw them up. <clears throat> and so we want to use a 0 0.024 uh, inch trace, or that would be 24 mils. Uh, the via options over here is that uh, you can do uh, it. This will not allow you to do micro vias. This will not allow to do allow you to do blind or buried vias. But you can do that. And if I remember correctly, these via options are not available in uh, Eagle. The you know you can't make a board uh, complex enough that has you know blind, buried, or micro vias. Something else to mention is this net class editor. And uh, this is that deliberate thing that I was telling you about, and that's the, <clears throat> uh, what that is, is you can assign, uh, uh, you can create a, uh, you know, let's say all of your power traces you want to be thicker. You could create a thicker trace here with the clearance and track width and, and whatnot. And then uh, you can assign your different nets uh, that net class and what that will allow you to do is uh, you, you don't even have to think about what traces are power what traces are signal the the tool will select them for you without you know having to screw around with this but now that we've got our uh, custom track width set up and we have our design rules set up we can hit ok
Uh, I think we need to change you is what it's complaining about. Uh, one, oh, two, seven, because it won't let you violate that. There we go. <clears throat> So uh, now that we've got our design rules set and we have our <clears throat> uh, track width set, we can go ahead and start routing. But all of our parts here are just kind of uh, strewn about. And Eagle, oh, sorry, uh, KiCad actually has a nice uh, tool to do this with, and it's this guy right here. If you go into footprint mode like that, you can right click, go global spread in place, and spread out all footprints. And hit yes. And you can see all the footprints have gotten spread out. Because if you had a couple of hundred footprints, because we only have, what, like four? Yeah, four footprints. If you had, you know, a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand, them all getting uh, thrown on top of each other would be uh, bad news bears, and trying to spread them all out would be uh, murder. And now, now that we finished doing this, you can go ahead and leave uh, the uh, footprint mode. Now that we've got our uh, parts nice and spread out, I can go ahead and start arranging them. The, uh, the movement of parts works just like it does in the schematic editor, where you hover over a part and hit M, and then click to drop. If you are in a location that's uh, ambiguous, let me see if I can get it to do it. Nope, uh, maybe, there we go. In an ambiguous location, this menu will pop up and it will ask you, do you want to move the footprint or do you want to move the value? And in this case, we want to move the footprint and note how when I hit footprint, the mouse will actually snap back to the original location so the part doesn't actually move. Eagle doesn't do this, you know, the part will actually fly kind of off into infinity over here. And when you're moving the part, you can go ahead and hit R to rotate it. And we want to put the part, you know, like that in the middle. And now go ahead and hit M to grab the capacitor and then uh, R to rotate it. and click to place it and I really don't care about the values here so I can actually uh, in the render tab here shut off the values like that because they're you know they mostly get in the way now that we've got kind of the the general uh, shape laid out here we can uh, look at our grid and we want to make our grid 100 mils, like that. Because this will allow us, let's see here, one, two, three, four. Because we'd like to make this plug into a breadboard. And so we'd like to make the spacing in such a way that it's conducive to plugging into a breadboard. And so the uh, we need a minimum of a, what is it, uh, three mils to gap the uh, that bread, you know, to gra uh, gap that space in the <clears throat> breadboard, and we can make it a little wider from that. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Let's go for five. Like that, and... One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Uh, another way you can do this is if you look down here, you have a, <clears throat> uh, this shows you. Excuse, oops, this shows you where your curse is at. This down here, the dx dy, shows you your relative cursor position. The way that works is if I move my cursor over here and then I hit spacebar, you can see dx dy have uh, zeroed out. Now I can move my cursor over here and dx will show you that we've moved uh, 500 mils and dy will show you that we haven't moved at all because in the vertical position we haven't moved. This is a very, very useful tool. Uh, now we want to make our grid a little finer. Let's see here, grid and let's make it no, 5 mils. And we can move the rest of our components around. Uh, 
like that, and like that, uh, to <clears throat> uh, make the rest of it, you know, uh, fit into our uh, space here. Which I could probably center this chip up a little better, like that, and you can also clean up the uh, component uh, reference designators like that, because uh, in KiCad, the parts are effectively smashed by default, meaning that uh, you don't have to go through and specifically uh, smash them to release the reference designator. All you have to do is just mouse over it and hit M instead of hitting M to move everything. Now that we've got all of that laid out, we can go ahead and uh, you know set the uh, dimensions of the board up. The way you do that is you grab the graphic line tool. We want to go to layers here and we want to go to edge cuts like that to make the edge cuts the active layer. What that will do is when I go ahead and place this uh, graphic line, the graphic line will go to the edge cuts layer and the edge cuts layer is your board dimension. Whereas an eagle, the you know, there's a standard board dimension already plopped down for you, uh, in, in uh, which I believe is a uh, reference to the maximum size of board you can make. In KiCad, you don't have those restrictions, so you know, they don't give you that you know built-in edge cuts layer. And so now I can go ahead and. set up our board dimensions. Let's see here, one, two, three. Let's see, Just need one more. And uh, double click to end. So now we have the, an edge cuts layer, you know, this defines our uh, outer board dimensions, like that. Now we want to start routing. Routing in KiCad is much different because there's actually two different routers. There's the default router and then there's the interactive router. Let me show you, right now we're in the default router and the way you actually uh, switch between them is right here. F9 switches you to the default canvas. Uh, F11 uh, switches you to the OpenGL canvas, and it's the OpenGL canvas that's the, the really, really special one. But then again, the default canvas isn't bad at all. Let me show you. <clears throat> you can, uh, since I went ahead and grabbed the trace here, you can go ahead and, you know, mouse over a pad. Oh, oops, I need to switch back to the top layer. There we go. And see, it, it actually snaps to the uh, origins of the uh, air wires. And I can go ahead and gr uh, click here, and a trace will appear. And this trace right now is the, uh, uh, right here, oh, oops, the 0.98 mils uh, we had set before. If I hit W, this will switch me to that larger trace that we had before, uh, the one we set in the custom trace widths. And so if you look at the trace, uh, those borders around the trace, those extra lines all the way around, is actually the DRC uh, showing you what you are and aren't allowed to do with this trace. And let me show you, if I come over this way and click, see the trace didn't didn't do anything because it knows that you're violating the DRC rules since you're over another net it won't let you place the trace but if I come up here and click see the trace actually mounted because it allowed me to do it because we know that uh, uh, we're not violating any DRC rules and that will kind of snap to here but something goofy is when you click the trace doesn't end you have to double click to end the trace like that. And then if you come over here, you can go ahead and do the same thing like that. Uh, this is, you know, this is really all of the, 
options if you want to say for the uh, default uh, canvas let me show you another one just for the sake of posterity go ahead and grab you bring you over here and if when you want to make a via you hit the v key and a via will appear in the case of the uh, default canvas uh, the via actually just kind of drops down to where Ever you place it in the case of the interactive router I'll show you that in a minute here you can bring it through and uh, the via is right there and the via is going to be the the same size as what your uh, rules are set to but as I said that's about it for the default router uh, if you hit or to, if you go to view and hit you know, this this will change you over to the interactive router the interactive router uses OpenGL if you uh, as you saw from the menu here so you really need a computer the, the a computer graphics card that's not terribly old <clears throat> what makes the interactive router so much nicer is let me show you first of all you select the trace here and when this is selected and you hit E, it brings you up the rules for interactive mode. In the interactive mode, we'll show you, you have three options. Highlight collisions, shove, walk around. And then some op options. Uh, I'm not really going to get into these options. Uh, you know, you can uh, look at those on your own. But the the two that we're interested in is the walk around and the shove. Let me show you the walk around first. Hit OK. In this case, what I can do is grab this trace here, and as I move the trace around, you can see the trace will follow my mouse and hug the edge. You know, it'll. As it implies, it'll walk around, so it will uh, <clears throat> uh, it'll do its best to uh, get around things, but without violating the DRC. And so, like, it can't make it through the middle here, so it'll pop around this way. Or if I try to bring it this way, it'll come around this way. To so the, uh, I would actually say this uh, walk around one is my favorite because I can very quickly go okay this one goes here then this one goes here this one goes here and it, it's very fast uh, let me hit E and show you the shove here okay in the shove mode whenever you get to an obstacle it'll highlight it and it'll actually move that obstacle out of the way the best it can and in, in shove mode that's when you uh, you've run a bunch of traces and you can't quite get that last one through shove mode is incredible for that because you can see it will actually it can move a whole bunch of stuff out of the way and so if you know when you have a big processor with a whole bunch of pins trying to uh, weasel some of those last traces out may be difficult and shove mode becomes awesome for that something kind of unique about or at least i found unique about uh KiCad is that there's no unroute tool what you have is you use the delete key to delete stuff let me go back to the mouse here and you just come over what you're doing and go ahead and delete things and whenever it doesn't know it will tell you that you know i want to delete the track not the pad if you accidentally screw up and go boop oops i deleted the capacitor if you notice it right away you can go edit undo and it will put the capacitor back but let's say you you know deleted a bunch of things including the capacitor and you can't really undo because you noticed it later what you can always do is hit uh, net read current net list and it will uh, return your capacitor to you 
So I'm using the M key to move here and the R key to rotate like that. And then we can use uh, uh, M again to move this over here. Oops. Didn't mean to grab it again. And uh, that is something that would actually uh, make sure that you do is once you think your board is complete, go ahead and just, uh, you know, read the net list again to make sure that you didn't screw something up. Another thing to note is down here, you actually have an unconnected uh, net counter or unconnected air wire, whatever you want to call it. And this actually will tell you uh, if you've missed any air wires. It, it makes it kind of nice to uh, look for. And so let's go ahead and uh, let's clean this board up a little bit. Like that. Let's see, I'm hitting the delete key as I'm over a uh, track. Track, 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 like that. <clears throat> And let's actually go ahead and route this board uh, uh, for realsies and um, to move the capacitor here like that. Let's not put it too close. Go ahead and grab our trace. And uh, we could actually probably stand to make the uh, traces a little thinner. So if we go to the global design rules here, we can, let's say, make this a 20 instead of a 24. That'll make the board a little uh, nicer to route. And now we're already holding our route tool, and so we can go ahead and route this trace this way, and then route this trace this way. And if you notice in the uh, interactive router, once you hit the endpoint of the trace, a single click finishes the trace for you. I kind of like that option better than I do the double click to end the trace in the, uh, the default canvas. And so now we can come over here. And actually, uh, to switch layers, you switch layers over here. And what's actually kind of interesting in the interactive canvas here, uh, it will highlight the layer that you're on. So let me show you. It looks like you're routing the bottom layer underneath. But you really aren't. It's just highlighting that layer to make it uh, more uh, easily visible. And so I can come over here and hit V to give me a via. And like I said, the another difference between the uh, interactive router and the uh, default router is when you hit V, it, uh, the interactive router doesn't place a via. So I can click to place the via, which will automatically bring me up to the top layer. And I can go ahead and connect that. And go ahead and connect that. Now let's finish routing the rest of the board. Go ahead and click to start a trace. Hit V to place a via. Click to uh, mount the via, so to speak. And then, as you can see, it was actually... Oops, I guess we're still in the uh, push and shove mode. You can see that uh, whenever you change your layers, uh, the uh, which layer lights up changes. Let me see if I can demo. Oh, uh, like right, if you look right here, when I switch to the bottom layer, uh, the uh, traces pop up. This makes it actually a lot nicer to uh, route in that layer, whereas with uh, Eagle, those layers were uh, kind of muddled. to do so let's see here go ahead and grab you bring over this way hit v to place the via place the via now bring you over this way like that and let me hit e and i want to change to walk around mode like that Now, in walk-around mode, you can just drag the trace, and it will make sure that the uh, trace doesn't violate any rules. If your 
anal like I am sometimes, you can kind of progressively click and guide the trace because the trace will kind of stick to uh, some of those places like that. This one, we can bring it over here like that. V to place our via. And then bring it over to here like that. Oops. We change layers like that. We can bring it over this way, like that. Hmm, this last one might be a little rough to weasel out of there. Which we can delete this trace. Delete, 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 delete. Oh, I'll delete the track. And let's do this trace first and really hug everything over here. And we'll see if we can, ooh, we can totally sneak that guy past. See how nice that walk around mode is because it just whoop, play, uh, hugs that mm, previous track. Just like that. And uh, we can, we can do something similar to that. Uh, something I found, which is kind of annoying, is you have to switch over to the, the mouse tool here to do any deleting. Like that. And so what we can do is go ahead and, ooh, you have this, uh, interesting inversion here. And what we can do for that is use a, The uh, actually, we can route you on the bottom. Let me switch to the bottom layer like that, grab you, and bring you over this way. And again, see how nice it was that that, that trace just kind of popped right into where it needed to go. Uh, switch to the top layer here, bring you over this way. And then if you look down here, you can see that our unconnected has dropped to one. <clears throat> and we can very clearly see where this is located. But let's say you had a really big board and you didn't know. Oh, I have an unconnected of one. You know, I have 300 components. Shit, where did it go? There's some interesting tools built in to help you with that. So what we do is we go to perform design rule check. Look at that. Let me bring that up here and we go start and it'll run through and see we got no errors. You know, everything's finished, etc. But down here we have this unconnected tab. You come over here and it'll say that you have, you know, an unconnected trace. Double click on this and it will, uh, center you up on where your trace is. So where this is, you know, that didn't seem like it was really helpful, but what you can do is come over, let's say come over here and zoom in really close. Go back to the DRC, double click on this, and you can see that uh, it, all it did was just shifted you over. Now you, you can very easily find where that unconnected trace was. Very, very convenient. Let me go grab the route tool again and bring it over this way like that and we are all done as far as the uh routing the board goes now that we did now that we did that what we can do is uh put a ground pour on this board and the way you do that is with this tool right here add uh filled zones and this tool is pretty easy to use click and it will ask you where do you want to put the uh, fill top copper bottom copper let's put it on the bottom copper and we want to put that on well, I guess I need to I forgot to look what the net was 
Uh, looks like net C1. If you had used the uh, the PowerPoints, we want to go net C1 pand 1, and we want to put it on the bottom copper and hit OK. And now you see this green line has appeared from our origin. And now when I click over here, I can go ahead and follow this around. To go ahead and cover the oops, let's go ahead and cover the board in a uh, ground plane, and I believe it's B. Nope, I think I need to switch back over to the. Uh, it's F9 to switch over to the default canvas like that, and I guess the ground plane did not take. Let me try that again in the default canvas. Because I had much better luck with this in the default canvas. So we want to go bottom coppers, C1, OK. And click over here, and uh, something that you notice in the default canvas is you have a line that goes back to your origin to show you where you started from, which is very, very convenient. Like that. Let me zoom back here, and then double click to end. And you can see uh, this little green line up here all the way around to show you where your uh, new uh, uh, copper pore has formed. In this case, it's going to be the ground if I hit B. Is it B or V? I forget these things. They're... I guess it is B. To fill and refill all zones. And now this will show you where all the uh, different zones filled by the copper pore are. And now we can do a copper pore on top as well. Same kind of process. We want C1 pad 1, but we want it on the top layer. OK. Go ahead and work all the way around our board. Double click to end like that, and B should do it. And the uh, copper pore is kind of uh, trapped by the way we routed the board. We can't really uh, get it over here. which uh, there are some things we can try and do to alleviate that, but in this case, I'm not sure if it's really worth it, and so we can go ahead and remove that and just have uh, the board as it is. Other things we would uh, like to do is to do some labeling. Because uh, labeling is always very nice. And so, uh, doo -doo -doo. oops, cancel, uh, grab the wrong tool there. I want to see if I can edit this. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> edit this designator to see what the sizes on it are, etc. And what we're about 40 mils height, 40 mils width, and I don't know, about 6 mils thickness. I like to look at that for a reference, what we're actually going to see. And let's go ahead and grab the text tool. And you can click to place something. And what do we want to call this? Let's, uh, let's call this GP1. Oops, one, like that. We want to place this in the F 
silk layer and we want to definitely make this smaller <clears throat> Go with 40, 40, and point oh five. Just play normal, justification center, style normal. I think everything else is okay. Hit okay, and then uh, GP1 appears here. And uh, this may be it's R. This may be a little large, so we can uh, shrink that down, hover over it, hit E. This three and three, okay. Uh, uh, M to move it. That seems a little better. And now we want to go back to our uh, look at our schematic, and let's do a side-by-side -side to make it a little nicer. What do we have here? Two's VDD. Uh, GP1 is pin 1 up here, and pin 5 down here. So let's go ahead and uh, first of all let's uh, edit this um, reference designator, make it invisible like that. Now we can uh, grab this GP1 and place it right here. This will uh, make it nice to um, <clears throat> deal with uh, hooking stuff up and now we can right click on it, hit GP1 uh, where is it, where is it, where is it actually let's hover over that and hit control C or is it just C yep C we can just quickly copy the text like that, and then we can go back in and edit it. So that first one was GP1, the second one is GP0, so hover over that, hit E. See, what's unfortunate is sometimes uh, making the board nice and pretty and easy to work with, it actually takes longer than routing the whole board. Number three here is going to be GP2. E. Turn to the edit mode. Two. Oops. The fourth one is GP4. And the fifth one is GP5. Like that. We got this side all cleaned up. Let's uh, go ahead and make that reference designator invisible and go C and copy those. Rotate that around. So I'm gonna edit and do the rotate uh, C go ahead and copy these again just like we did on the other side. Uh, one here is GP3. Hit the E key to so it's something you get used to, uh, instead of using the, the tool-based kind of stuff. The second one is VDD. Uh, you get used to hitting the keys instead of uh, using the tools like you were before. 
Then three is VSS. Um, want those three, four. What do we got? Four is GP zero. And the fifth one here is GP one. Oh, perfect. All right, GP one, to do, do, do. I like it like that. Now we have everything uh, labeled. But this is labeled on top so you can see uh, what is not, uh, so you can more easily see, uh, sorry, I'm looking for, so you can more easily see uh, what connections to make and where. But uh, because we want to make this the programming header, we also want to label the underside so you can see how to plug it into the programmer. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to go C, copy this guy. Now we're going to edit it. And we want to put it on the uh, B silks layer, which is the bottom silk like that. It turns purple. We want to go... go ahead and copy it and I'm doing this off to the side here just so it's uh, easier to see to, to know which ones you're editing and we want to edit this and this is VPP like that this is going to be VDD edit VSS It's going to be a dot for the data line and a CLK for the clock line, like that. <clears throat> and use uh, M to go ahead and move these over like that. And like that. And um, let's see, for labeling purposes, let's also go ahead and I don't know, throw my name on there just for shits and giggles. You can go C to copy that guy, R to rotate it, uh, E to edit it, Igor. Vinograd, like that. Uh, lately I've been uh, liking to sign my work, and we can zoom into that and hit E, not E, sorry, M, to move it and place it on the board down here like that. E to edit it, and E A P B G dot com. Like that. Oops. Um, I still do kind of get confused with uh, <clears throat> which uh, tools do what. I kind of, I don't know if you've noticed, I've been kind of pecking at the wrong keys here like that. And let's go ahead and save it. And uh, something I said that we would do is we're going to upload this board file to Oshpark. I have it pulled up here. This is uh, oshpark.com. And uh, to go ahead and look at a render of our board, we can hit get started now. And as you can see, uh, Oshpark will natively accept Eagle, and they have from, from the very beginning, but they will also now accept native KiCad files. And I want to say this is one of, uh, this was a very large chunk of the pie as to why I decided to switch to uh, KiCad, or at least learn how to use it, if anything else, because a lot of my old projects are still in Eagle, and I don't just want to abandon them. Let's go to Dropbox, uh, Hardware, 2017 Projects, Pick 16, and we're going to grab this KiCad PCB. KiCad underscore PCB and hit Open. 
And up here, it'll tell you for Eagle, it's .brd. For KiCad, it's KiCad underscore PCB. And if you had generated the Gerber files, you can uh, zip them up. And you can see the renders of our board where we have, uh, it'll show you what the, uh, all the different uh, layers look like. And I'm actually not sure whether that's a rendering problem or... Hmm. Let me look at the board here. E, we want to look at VPP. Ah, there we go. We want to... Go ahead and mirror that. E. And the B silks. Mirrored. Uh, uh, that mirroring action is something that uh, Eagle does automatically. I guess you have to do it manually here like that. There we go. And we can go ahead and save it. And in you can hit start over. And go ahead and select that same board file and let it upload. To, to do to do it takes a second or two to render and there we go uh, VPP VDD via said that and clock uh, if I enter my email address we can also look at the other renders but I uh, I don't think that's necessary for this demonstration and we are all done with our board uh, this board will be a dollar eighty for three copies which is you know very very cheap and the, as I mentioned the way we design this board is we already have the decoupling cap, so the, the processor should go ahead and function as you expect it to. And this header here, you can just plug directly into a, uh, a like a Picket 3 programmer to uh, well, program this micro, so you yank it out of a breadboard and then stick it right into the programmer. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been a introduction um, uh, an introduction on how to use KiCad from an Eagle user's perspective. And, you know, we looked at the schematic, the symbols, uh, the editor, the symbol editor, the footprint editor, how to link them, how to do the net list, how to run the DRC, how to set everything up. Uh, hopefully this helps and said as much as I could, or at least as much as I remembered, I... Uh, noted that the subtle differences between the two or the larger differences and that I, I hope this helps you.